Hello my friends, today's video is my review of Mary and May skincare. Like all of my skincare trials, I'm coming at you all bare face today. I do have dry and acne prone skin, and if you're somebody who hates intros or you're looking just for information on one product, check the description box below for timestamps as well as links to all of the products that I will talk about in today's video. But if you do like intros, what I want to do in today's video, first and foremost, I want to make sure I give you a good frame of reference for this brand. So uh, this is a brand where I've used all but one product for a minimum of two weeks, some of these products for months at this point. And I can really tell you that this brand as a whole for me has been phenomenal at relieving my dryness during the winter even. If you're acne prone, I don't think the brand is going to solve the problem of acne entirely on its own. And if you do have an oily skin type, some of these products may be a little bit too heavyweight in the way that they feel. But I also wanna tell you why I was so interested in this brand that I decided to do a trial of a brand that you know I don't really even hear that many people talk about. Sometime last fall, Yes Style had gifted me the Ida Benone and Blackberry Complex Serum, and I absolutely fell in love with it. First of all, we're talking about unique ingredients, beautiful glass packaging that feels so much more expensive than it actually costs. And my curiosity led me to buy six more products, all of which I did purchase through Style Korean. As a bit of a, a tip for you, Style Korean seems to have the best prices on this brand, but do check uh, Style Vana as well as Yes Style. But of course, the con with Style Korean is the $20 shipping unless you spend $80. I'll once again link my K Beauty retailer review if you're curious on how they compare, and I'll have my uh, codes in the description box below and up on the screen if you are interested in purchasing any of these products. And as for what Marion May says about themselves, they are a clean and cruelty free Korean skincare brand, which is admittedly a little more difficult to find, especially at good price points. Uh, that also talks about how less is more, that's going to be very critical through this video, and also believe in truth, which while that statement sounds a little bit like, uh, what else would you believe? believe in lies? I mean, I don't, I, I'm, anyway, I think what they're referring to is that they disclose the percentage of all of the main ingredients in their products. So with this tranexamic acid and glutathione eye cream, they tell you how much of those ingredients are in here, which is relevant to me. I just went on a rant last week about how I need that information. We should have that information. They also have some fragrance-free products, although not everything. I'll make sure to note which products are fragrance-free and which ones are not. And they also uh, have some kind of an EWG system, all, all green EWG. I, it doesn't mean that much to me personally, but I know it does to some people, so there you go. So I think that's a good intro to the brand. Let's talk next about the routine that I made using these products. So every time you watch one of these skincare reviews, I'm always, you know, heavily focusing on the brand in question for at least two weeks. With this brand, I felt like I did need to make some big changes in my underlying routine. Namely because I actually have a video on this channel where I show you using the 6 pi uh, peptide complex in conjunction with retinol. I'm comfortable with doing that personally, but due to uh, a lot of people's comments about the copper peptide content in this and the controversy around whether you can use copper peptides with retinol, I personally decided to switch to a very strong retinoid once a week and then just use this every other night. Just to, you know, not be a bad influence, I guess. The reality with copper peptides is you may be able to combine them with retinol, but it is not advised to combine them with stronger retinoids. Honestly, copper peptides are really confusing, but we're gonna talk more about that <laughs> when we get to this product. I, of course, also used my benzoyl peroxide cleanser and tested out other cleansers during this. More on that in a moment. And I used the 6-peptide serum at night, the Ida Benone serum during the day, the moisture Moisturizer day and night, and the toner the longest of all, day and night. Okay, I think we're finally ready for individual product reviews. So the first one is going to be the Marion May White Collagen Cleansing Foam, 
which is the only product that I used once on my face. This was just too drying for me. It's so funny that my, my conclusion with this brand is it's wonderful for dry skin, and yet the first product that I pull up, I'm telling you, nope, nope, it was not for my skin type. This is a, a, a mystery for me with Korean skincare. I have found so few cleansers that I truly love, and it's almost funny. You look at this right here, it says on the bottle, 1% niacinamide, 46.6% collagen. Collagen's a great humectant, but I think, I, I suspect that the surfactants maybe were just too strong. And y'all, this is so, so similar to another Korean cleanser, the Cinco Perfect Whip. I, I, I don't think side by side I'd be able to figure out which is which. And I finished that. I enjoyed that cleanser as a product I used while shaving. So that's exactly what I've been doing with this, just too drying for my face. But let me quickly mention, y'all keep asking me about this one. I bought it, the Beauty of Joseon uh, Green Plum Refreshing Cleanser. Oh my goodness, it is so good. It's so good. Next up, let's talk about apparently one of the best sellers from Mary and May. This is the Vitamin B5 and Bifida Toner. I started using this toner about a month ago. If you saw my e.l.f. skincare review, I ended up having to uh, skip that toner, so I switched to Mary and May's. I have to say, I really do enjoy this product. All that said, I'm not entirely sure that I'll immediately repurchase it. Instead, I might finish it and look for another product that contains this bifida ingredient. We'll see though, we'll see what I do. It is a good price. It did go extremely well on my skin. I felt like my skin was a lot calmer, a lot uh, more hydrated after using this specific toner. Where it gets tricky for me is that, uh, you know, again, Marion May is incredibly good about disclosing the percentage of these products in the form of parts per million, which is an easy conversion. So Bifida Ferment Lysate, 30,380 parts per million, that is about 3%. Where this gets tricky for me is that, first of all, B. Longham, in terms of the research in skincare applications, is actually pretty limited. There's one study, albeit a good study, that is just kind of consistently cited as the argument for why to use bifida ferment. That one is conducted at a 10% level. Here's where this whole thing gets tricky, though. When you're talking about skincare research, you're looking at one ingredient as a focus. And let me tell you something about skincare research, speaking from the experience of a researcher myself. I would be disqualified from skincare studies, so would you. You would be disqualified. We have way too many extraneous variables to be a good candidate for skincare research. What you really need is somebody who, uh, you know, comes into the study and says, uh, I hear people put hydrochloric acid on their skin, that's good, right? I just washed my face with shampoo. What a perfect candidate for skincare research. Let's find out what this ingredient does on their skin, which has seen Absolutely nothing but the light of day. But it's almost tricky if you think about it. In removing the extraneous variables, do you really get a good idea of uh, skincare results for people who use a lot of skincare? Some bit of a rhetorical question. So I think it is worth acknowledging that maybe 3% bifida in conjunction with strong antioxidants, in conjunction with peptides, in conjunction with tea tree extract, could all come together to make a very well-rounded routine. And I, I think that's what Mary and May is arguing in their whole less is more approach. So this is all to tell you, I actually like it. I had good results. It doesn't quite match the scientific literature, but I do like it. And a few more notes on bifida. So bifida ferment lysate refers to a postbiotic. It is not living. In fact, it's been cut into pieces. That's what lysate means. And uh, although there's not a ton of research that is published, I feel like there has been a lot of research because Estee Lauder and L'Oreal both love this ingredient. Ooh, they love this ingredient. It's in Advanced Night Repair. It's in Lancome's Genifique and in a lot of other Korean skincare products as well. So there certainly is a lot of anecdotal love for the ingredient. 
Okay, let's talk about the two serums next. So I did use the Ida Benone and Blackberry Complex Serum, again, the only gifted product in this video. So Ida Benone is a, a synthetic alternative to coenzyme Q10. I think it was actually developed in Japan. In the literature, Ida Benone actually suffers from uh, the same cons as bifida ferment lysate in that there's just not a ton of research. There's again one study that seems to continuously be cited but it is promising. You know, it is great to have antioxidants in your routine, and this product is paired with Blackberry Complex, and the Blackberry Complex is at 20%. The Ida Benone is at 1,000 parts per million, or 0.1%. And while that sounds really low, one thing to know about the research on idabenone is that they looked at 0.5% as well as 1%. And in terms of the results of that study, the parameters actually were quite close. Here, specifically reading from the study, 26% reduction in skin roughness and dryness for 1% and then 0.5%, 23% reduction. 37% increase in skin hydration in both 0.5 and 1%. 29% reduction in fine lines and wrinkles with 1%. 27% with 0.5. So yeah, you can see, I mean, it, it's, it's surprisingly close. And what that tends to mean is that, uh, you know, it's probably effective at both of those levels, it could be effective at even less. So something important to keep in mind with a skincare product that contains 0.1% idabenone is what else is in your routine? What else are you using? Are you also using the idabenone cream? Because you're going to get more of that ingredient if you are adding more into your routine. So with this being such a strong antioxidant, I did decide to drop vitamin C for myself personally and just switch to this. I will say it's a lot easier to use than vitamin C. You know, there's no stinging sensation like there is with L-ascorbic acid. Again, it's beautiful. It's an absolutely beautiful, cosmetically elegant serum. I can say I feel my skin looks more glowy and more even and that I enjoyed using this. So considering its incredible price point, you know, there's a lot of other strong antioxidants that have been hitting the market, and a lot of times brands are selling these for, you know, a hundred, two hundred dollars. So again, to me, Marion May comes through, even though also, again, it is a little bit of a lower percentage than the published literature. How often do brands even tell you that, though? You know, I really respect this brand. I feel like my conversation around the Mary May six peptide complex. Mary May. I think I just southernized a Korean skincare brand. <laughs> Miss Mary May makes the jalapeno cornbread. Mary and May make the skincare. Okay, we've got it now. Anyway, I have a lot to say about the six peptide complex. I have seen a few people point out wow, the percentage of the six peptides in this is pretty low. Whew, we have a lot to talk about. I think the best place to start in explaining peptides is actually to take a big step back and talk about the Ordinary's Matrixel. So the Ordinary sells a Matrixel serum, which is uh, at 10%, right? That is a peptide serum. I've seen a lot of people assume that that means the product contains 10% peptides. However, it does not. Matrixel is referring to the complex of peptides. Matrixel itself is a formula within the Ordinary's Matrixel Serum, which uses glycerin, water, butylene glycol, as well as two peptides. Part of that 10% is water, butylene glycol, and glycerin. Absolutely. It is not 10% peptides. You do not need 10% peptides. Because peptides are signaling molecules. Think of it like, oh, I'm going to once again revive an old meme, something I'm very good at. Do you all remember that meme of the guy dancing at a festival? He's the only one dancing, and then all of a sudden, one other person runs over to dance with him, then another person runs over, and then just a ton of people are all dancing at this festival. It's a great video, fantastic. I love that dude, what a hero, what a true hero. That is what peptides do, at least signaling peptides. They act as signals in your skin to get your skin to do something. That's why you don't need that much of them. You just need one 
signaling peptides, stand in there dancing, telling your skin, make more collagen here. It's a whole party of collagen production. This serum does contain six peptides. Every single one of them is at two parts per million, which does translate to 0.0002%, which sounds incredibly low, but we have to look at uh, the research behind each of those six peptides individually. Holy smokes, I have way too much research on this topic for one video. I'm going to try to keep this as simple as I can. So a copper peptide is in this product. The recommended amount for a copper peptide is 0.05% to 0.5%. Uh, I have seen some people claim 1% and as high as 10%, but there's a whole, again, copper peptide just is... It's so confusing that that's why I haven't wanted to make a video on it yet. There's a whole uh, concern over something that people have deemed the copper peptide uglies. For me personally, I actually like it at 1%. I felt like this uh, was not a copper peptide serum. To me, again, uh, the more copper peptide, the more blue your product will be. And this one is, it, it's not blue probably because it is in here at 0.0002%. But anyway, that's not all that is in here. We also have tripeptide 1. Tripeptide 1 is typically used at 0.001 to 0.05%. Palmet oil tripeptide 1, typically used at 0.001% to 0.01%, still a little low in this product. Palmet oil pentapeptide 4, also found in Matrixyl, 0.0003%. So it's actually kind of close to that one in particular. Hexapeptide 9, typically used at 0.002 to 0.01%. So to give you my thoughts on it after, I guess I started using this one in about December, but I do like it, you know? I, I do feel like my skin looks pretty good while using this, and you cannot beat the price. Have you seen the price on some of these peptide serums? I think it's worth trying, I really do. Let's move on to the Ida Benone Blackberry Intense Cream. Y'all, this is one of my favorite products from this entire brand. So before we talk about the ingredients, I've just got to talk about the texture. This is so beautiful, you know, especially coming from the e.l.f. trial where I did not feel this way about that moisturizer at all. What an absolute delight it was to apply this to my skin, to feel this incredible nourishing sensation, and it still glides beautifully on my skin, dryness just instantly relieved. All with a very low irritation potential, it's a fully fragrance-free product with some obviously added antioxidants from the Ida Benone and Blackberry. It is so gorgeous. Now, admittedly, this may be too much on people with a more oily or even combo skin type. Type, but you all, I cannot believe, I cannot believe how beautiful this is for dry skin. I would still say it's not the absolute heaviest, so that made it good for both day and nighttime use for me. You may still want something a little more at night, depending on how dry you are. But I mean, again, <laughs> I, I, I love this product. Imagine this at Sephora. This would be a hundred dollars. It's beautiful, beautiful glass packaging, gorgeous texture. It'd be a hundred dollars at Sephora. Oh yeah, and it's 2.46 ounces. It's absolutely huge. And as far as the ingredients, we have 21% blackberry, 21% blueberry, and 21% acai. As well as, of course, the 500 parts per million Ida Benone. I think it's interesting that, uh, you know, Ida Benone really takes over in the color. Sorry to be hyping this product up so much, but this is that texture that I love that I've paid easily $60 for in such a huge size for usually less than $25. Fellow dry skin types, you will probably also feel the same as I do about the Mary and May eye cream. This one, this is an even better price. This is currently on the Yes Style website, $13 for an ounce? in the packaging that everybody wishes all eye creams came in, and it is still a very rich and nourishing eye cream. I'm just so excited about the texture of both the eye cream and the moisturizer. They're so beautiful. Now, I have to admit something to you. I was so interested in this eye cream because it is called the Tranexamic Acid and Glutathione Eye Cream. I have typically liked tranexamic acid as an ingredient for hyperpigmentation since I do have acne. Sometimes I'll have little marks on my skin that I fade with tranexamic acid. So I thought, oh, what a good idea in an eye cream. You know, if people have dark circles under their eyes, they could use tranexamic acid. That's brilliant. 
I really made a bit of an oopsie in forgetting when I bought this that I don't have dark circles under my eyes. How are you going to test that? How, how, how are you going to test your premise if you don't have circles under your eyes, Alice? Yeah, I know. I know. So I can't comment on that. It's a bit of a newer ingredient, so it hasn't actually been studied as an eye cream ingredient, but it is in here at 0.1%, again, a little lower than the literature. Glutathione as well, another antioxidant ingredient, also at 0.1%. But, you know, again, the reason I was just raving about this is because the texture is glorious. If it is $13 for one ounce, that would be $6.50 for a half ounce, your standard American size. This is so good. It's so good. It's so uh, occlusive and yet not heavy. It is absolutely an amazing texture. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm really hyping up the textures. I, I, I can't help it. And one more product to review in this video. And if you have a more oily or acne prone skin type, don't worry, I've finally gotten to a product that I think might possibly be for for you. This is the Marion May Sika Hot. I can never say this word cor correctly. It's the Heart Leaf Tea Tree Mask. I can pronounce long chemical names and I can't say Hoi I can't say it. I I'm gonna mess it up. Yeah, Heart Leaf, good enough. Heart Leaf. Okay, so uh, I have the percentages written down somewhere here. Oh, there they are. Okay, so we have 1% of Seiko, 1% Heart Leaf, and 1% Tea Tree Extract. So again, low, but as the brand says, less is more. This was one of the more expensive purchases for me. I can't find my Style Korean receipt. I don't know what keywords I need to be looking at in my email, but I, I think I paid about $15 for this, which is not bad. This is a pack of 30 sheet masks. That means they were about 50 cents each, and I do love this format. I put this entire little thing in my refrigerator, open it up whenever I want a mask. You just lift out this... You violently lift this part out, at least if you're me. Maybe other people can do this and look not like a hot mess, but if you're me, violently lift this off and then you got your little tweezers so you can pull out one sheet mask at a time and they are nice and cold because they were in your refrigerator. And then this doesn't quite close. It's my only problem with all of these uh, box sheet masks that I've purchased, there's always something wrong with the way they close. The last one I bought was from VT Cosmetics and the entire box broke on my very last mask. So I don't know why. They, they seem to be doing fine because of how hard <laughs> this is to remove, but just as a heads up, this is how it looks. If you open my refrigerator, you will see all my almond and cashew and oat milks, and then you'll see this on the top shelf, sitting there like that. I am a bit perplexed, and I think other people have said the same thing, that this is uh, their sensitive skincare line. Of course, Sika and Tea Tree are often meant for acne-prone skin types or oily skin types, and yet it is not a fragrance-free product. However, uh, I would say it does have a natural scent. It naturally smells like tea tree. Maybe they just have some masking fragrance in it of some sort so that it doesn't smell too tea tree, maybe? Also, one thing about these that kind of surprised me is they did dry out very quickly on my skin. This happens with some masks. You know, you're only supposed to leave them on for 10 to 15 minutes. It dries out in that period of time. I think that ultimately what I'm trying to say with this product is it's fine. I'll definitely finish it. But two things. First of all, it's probably not my absolute favorite sheet mask that I've ever tried. I might try their other versions though. And secondly, I don't think it's enough on its own to really fight acne. So depending on the severity of acne, I would recommend something like a benzoyl peroxide cleanser or a salicylic acid product in addition to this. So to give you a big summary, my favorite products again were the two moisturizers, the eye cream and the Ida Benone cream because I think this brand does moisturizer incredibly well. I like the toner, not sure if I'll stick with it. I like the serums. I think the serums are very much worth trying at their price point and I love the transparency in these. You know, for as much time as I spent on this video talking about the percentage of peptides in here, I can think of so few brands, so few brands, that actually disclose the peptide percentage, and yet, I would bet you anything, not money, we'll, we'll make a bet like, someone does my dishes, I bet you anything, this is the same levels in, you know, $100 peptide serums. Uh, some corporate CEO is coming to do my dishes. 
While I like the idea behind the masks, not an absolute favorite, and the cleanser simply too harsh, and that concludes it. I feel like this was probably a long video. I don't know. I think, uh, you know, when you call up the research like this, it just means a video ends up being a lot longer. But hopefully it's helpful. Again, this is a brand that I don't hear a lot of people discuss, but uh, what a tragedy. What a, what a great brand. And if any of you have tried these products and want to share your thoughts, please feel free. Use my comment section below. Let us know how these products have gone for you. But that's it. That's all I have for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you did enjoy this video. The next trial will finally be a pharmacy, which I've been needing to do for a while. It's going to be more of a, a multi-years of usage of pharmacy. Finally. I hope you all have a fantastic week, and I will see you all next time.